I honestly thought I did this video quite some time ago, but I checked out the channel and apparently not, so here it is, the ultimate Escanor in the D event. I was going to say brand new, but we've definitely had this one for quite some time. <laughs> I think the main reason why I'm probably a bit late to showing this one off is because I was very lazy when it came to actually grinding the Jormungand or Holy Relic, and I felt as if it was a little bit unfair showing off the Escanor in the deer when, I mean, the team isn't fully built to support, and I felt like it'd be just a tad bit unfair. The Jormungand or Holy Relic, and even having her in the field, very, very important. Definitely the strongest character you can have and is made entirely for this activity. Definitely making it super, super easy having this Escanor to beat the final stage. I found previously to his release, trying to get the completion on the final phase, very difficult considering the boss had the heal when, I think it was when surviving below 30% HP, straight back to full HP combined with the fact that he had to do the whole color cycling thing, it was very difficult, but being able to use the Freya ultimate with the death effect combined with Escanor's ultimate basically, or his single target card basically having its own uh, death effect tied to it. You can easily do the double damage cap and then you should be just fine to go ahead and finish things off but yeah oh, ultimate escanor know. is absolutely crazy and stuff like the death effect is just so broken for this kind of content combined with her passive there can be a couple instances where it can maybe be a negative um maybe getting too many gold cards not allowing duplicate cards to merge and then you might just have a full hand of the blue and red cards and then no green ones so you can't really do much but in instances like this where you know you're going to be able to finish off the deer, throwing off something like the Silver Estinor card just to get rid of it is 100% going to work. Um, ooh, Freya taking a little bit of damage. I thought I would have had the... I thought I would have had Tamiya Association on Freya. It might be on Kusak, actually, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Eh, I might actually end up swapping that later on the line, but go for this one here, and then, yeah, we can kind of just get rid of all of you. So... That way we're kind of setting up for the third phase, even though we don't have to do the whole color cycling thing. That way the hand's just in a little bit of a better spot. Look at that million damage. <laughs> I remember when the D release just how difficult this content was. I think I only completed the first two floors upon its initial release. Once again, it was very, very difficult content for its time. Hmm. Probably go something like this here. This will definitely this will definitely be enough to go ahead and get the job done. And then we should be fine to clear the third floor. Will Escanor actually go ahead and kill her? I'm hoping so. I'm hoping we can actually get a little bit of lifesteal for Freya as well. That's why I used this card here. Please get back to full HP because although it's not difficult content, I definitely like to be able to go into the second floor with just a little bit of HP would be kind of sweet. Okay, yeah, he should be fine here. Perfect, and then if you like... You can build up ultimates for this final phase. I don't really feel like I need to explain how the deer is done considering how long it's been out for, but um, pretty much, if you guys don't know, second and fourth phase have the color cycling, which you have to obviously take into account. If you don't go ahead and do that, they'll sometimes seal your turn, attack disable all of your units, or even play out corrosion in some of the later floors with very high multipliers. So something you usually try and want to stick away from doing, um, as you can see. Once you kind of get the full team built up and have all of the Holy Relics UR gear built up, you can kind of steamroll through these. I used to do pre-recordings of the deer and, I mean, even for some of the newer ones like Nidhogg, there's no way I'm going to record and have you guys watch a full video of me trying to beat the first two floors because, I mean, the first floor for Nidhogg now, you can get through pretty quickly. I beat it first try using the Archangel team, but the second one can take a little bit of RNG. Uh, going into this second floor, pretty much going to be starting off the exact way we started the other one with. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and use the weak cars for each of the characters, and then the Escanor one there. Um, phase 2, uh, oh, floor 2 phase 2, um, is a little bit different. If you end up going to the third turn and don't end up killing the deer, you want to have at least one of your characters frozen. Now, like I was talking before about the debuff effects, if you simply go ahead and attack with a character without the right characteristic base, depending on the wheel, um, they will go ahead and get frozen. So that's how we're going to kind of get around that. I'm sure we're going to have enough damage to go ahead and finish the phase anyways, but once again, maybe if you have a little bit less of a leveled up team, might be a good way to go around it. Yeah, they're really going for Freya in this one. I don't know why I had the Tamil on Usark. Maybe... I mean, you'd guess it'd go for Kusar, considering they're probably similar stats, and he has type advantage against him. Uh, we'll get rid of these, and then I'll just go ahead and get rid of you again. So yeah, more than enough to kill there. 
Uh, Time Milk is very, very helpful for this kind of stuff. The Demonic Beasts are definitely like going for the single target, getting rid of them and taking out your characters one by one, so gotta watch out for that. Uh, we'll go for... I mean, Freya's probably gonna be doing the most damage. Uh, yeah, why not? Go for this here, and then we'll also have the level 3 heal for if we need that oh, later on the one. And by this point, we're going to start seeing that our units are going to be doing no damage. Pretty much in order to remove that one, we're going to have to do at least one full cycle of the color wheel there. So after we use this Kusak card, um, that'll go ahead and rank up the Freya card. And now we should be able to go ahead and do the damage. Let's see it removed that other gray buff there. This is why it can be a little bit tricky to go ahead and kill in just the two turns. Um, yeah, we should be we should be fine here, especially considering we have the level 3 stance cancel card. Should be really good. Freya is just an absolute monster for all this content as well. If you guys have Freya, I recommend whenever you get dupes for characters, investing them anyways. You should only really be using your... Uh, what do we want to... Yeah, I'll go for this play in instead and then once you finish that off. Um, if you ever get duplicates for characters, I always recommend going until you get to obviously 6-6. Six, six. Anything further than that, I wouldn't even recommend spending your dupes in the coin shop nowadays. Rather, using them for Super Awakening is definitely a lot better. Um, Eskandor's gonna kill us, so we don't really have to worry about the freeze there, but yeah. Freya, super, super important character to invest into, destroys pretty much any PvE content that is thrown at him, and is pretty much the best unit for all of the Demonic Beast battles, up until Miles' release. Uh, let's see, I mean, this one we don't have to... We have each of you. Let's... We can do something like this. And then if we just save all those ultimates, by the time we get to the final phase, we can kind of burst the deer out in the one turn. Get rid of him. We probably could have even used the Escanor card in this turn. Made us kill a little bit faster, but I don't know if that would have made us kill in just the one turn there. Oh! No, surely that's too much for the Scorch effect to be able to finish off. Okay. Easy as... We haven't really had any trouble for these first two floors, which was kind of as expected. I may have to go and do a cut on the third floor. We'll see how the luck kind of things ends up going, but yeah, can't wait for Freya to get a Holy Relic. I'm really hoping it's something that ends up improving him on all of the different Demonic Beast battles. It's, <laughs> it'd be sad if it isn't, but I'm really hoping that it makes some decision and make it go towards PvP. They did really build the Freya towards PvP, which is one of the main reasons why all people probably didn't summon for it. Pretty much all of the Ragnarok characters are built for PvE. And then they switched things up and made her Holy Relic completely based for the new Demonic Beast battle. That is really annoying. That was the one passive I was hoping to not get in this run. Everything else I'm fine with. That makes things tricky. I mean, there's probably a good example to ways that we can work around the passive since it's probably the hardest one to get. Fine, we'll, we'll take it. It's good for the showcase. Uh, no... <laughs> Yeah, we didn't get any Kusar cards in that turn. That's really annoying. I was really praying on us being able to use the ultimates there. Uh, when going into the third floor in the final phase, instead of doing the strategy I said we were going to do with the Freya ultimate and the Eskimo single target card, pretty much going to have to swap things up and go for a double Eskimo single target card. Lucky for us, in the final phase, we're not going to get the attack disabled. We're going to get a Corrosion, which can be very, very strong, but if we're going to be killing very fast, which is what's going to happen, um, we'll be, we'll be all right. Man, yeah. Yeoman Gander, buddy. Not looking too good there. Uh, I mean, we'll just chuck out all this. Hoping Freya can still hit damage cap, even though it's not his type. Oh yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be just shy here. Eskinol's not gonna kill at all. Man, oh how here I am saying that we weren't gonna have any difficulty with this second floor, and then here I am getting getting it handed to me right towards the end. Uh, this isn't going to be too bad. We we should have enough HP to at least go into the next floor and keep ourselves alive. As well, you could easily get Yormungandr to level 100. You see, the Demotic Beast battles know what they're doing when it comes to characters to target in order to get the win. I'll go for that there. I know I can't use double green cards in a row, but we'll at least get a little bit of life still. Does the heal come in before the freeze? I think it does. Doesn't look like a dead crap. That's gonna finish things off. Lovely, love to see it. And then I might as well get the victory screen in for the... Get it in for the thumbnail. There we go. 
Um, this is also good because I still have a couple of the Holy Relics to grind for this. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's just Fat King and the Elivor. We should probably go ahead and check now. Mm, yeah, just those two. So a little while away from getting both of those done. But once they're done, it's really just trying to get a whole lot of the bird ones. A couple of Skull and Hardy ones. I could probably get another one really, really soon. And I'm trying to keep as up to date with those as possible. For someone who's trying to push 12 million bucks CC, I should really be more on top of that kind of stuff. But it's just... Writing that stuff when you can't auto Demonic Beast battles is so annoying. I'm probably going to wait until the next time they do a double drop event and kind of get it done there because, yeah, doing that stuff regularly, man. Not it whatsoever. I could probably... Yeah, if I go for this, it's going to get the most healing back for Jormungand, although it may end up leaving us without a green card for when we get into the second phase. I'm just thinking that we do that first, that way we get the level 2. I know she was going to get healing regardless, because on the level 1 she'd still be the lowest HP unit, but this will get just a little bit more healing. Give her a little bit more sustained. Yeah, I don't think putting Tarmiel on her is what we want at all. Man, look at these Freya cards. This is why when this content initially released, this could be so annoying, because this boss was so tanky at the time. Until they released the card set, it was really difficult, almost near impossible to finish that third phase. Granted, look, they're always the big whales that can get that stuff kind of done super, super easy. But for, but for a dolphin, it can be, can be a bit problematic. I still can't defeat the final boss or the final floor of Nidhogg. I'm hoping that happens this week. I'm going to try it and do it again now that my team's a little bit more built out, but I mean, 3-6 Mael and a 1-6 Freya. It's rough. It's rough out there. So this is the first phase, so we're going to have to worry about the color wheel. Please give me a green card. I mean, once again, it's good for the showcase because it kind of shows a realistic run of what you need to expect. Can I just spam Escanor cards and get away with that? <laughs> Because the wheel doesn't come up until we start using it, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, sweet. <laughs> That's also one way to get around the whole the whole passive if you're not a fan with it. Will, Kils will Kusak be able to finish? No. All good. We can still finish off with the Freya card this turn. Are we going to get any green cards this turn? Look, it's just the one. This is where initially I thought it was a little bit worse to run the light and dark type units in it, but... This Escanor having the death effect on his single target is so strong. We are really going to have to try and save up single target cards. And we lost Yormungandr. I'll come back when we... This run seems to be going just a little bit better. We have our Yormungandr with a tad bit more health. Um, this card should pretty much get her back to full. Uh, Kusar card will do a little bit more damage. That'll get us the first level 3 Escanor single target card that we need. And that'll leave us with a, another level 2 one. I was kind of hoping we'd do a little bit more damage than that, making this kill, but that'll probably mean we get the corrosion, which is going to hurt. That's all right. We could have worked around it, but it's fine. I totally, I did that on purpose once again for the showcase, kind of showing you an optimal run. <laughs> if at any point of these turns you feel like you don't want to go with that, as long as you pause your game or just completely alt F4, close your game before the end of the turn, you can always reset and, you know, have a second attempt at whatever you were trying to do. Hmm. Uh, that's gonna kill also. Why not? Uh, get rid of you, 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 and play you since we already have a green card now. And Man, here's the tricky part. So much easier saving the saving for the final phase when you have the Freya ultimate because you know you at least have one red card. Although you do need the second card to actually start off the turn with, um, because you obviously have to go through the full wheel and then finish off with his card. Something like this, I feel, could be pretty nice. And then I'll just go ahead and move your card there. One thing as well that's very fortunate about this event is this third phase is a lot tankier than the first two. So you can actually end up wasting quite a few cards. I mean, we're still going ahead and merging cards. Just to kind of give us some more time, because even using level 1 Escanor cards, you're going to burn through yourself far pretty quickly. I'm a tad bit scared, because... No, we can do the- we can keep the Escanor level 2 and then move into this final phase like this. This should be fun. We really need you to live here though. Okay, perfect. So, we'll go green. 
you, you, and then I'll just go ahead and... Actually, we could go for... This is a get your ultimate. Oh man, is this not even going to kill? Surely that's going to alright. Oh, this isn't even going to kill. We get more healing for you once again. And the remove the buff card. Hmm. I mean, everyone else is pretty much topped up. We can use the Eskinor ultimate in this turn, kind of waste it. That's fine. That's maybe not fine. Oh no. Oh, you're kidding me, man. I should have one run. <laughs> Here we go, back into the final phase. Man, actually having the kind of card draw we want for this one as well. Um, yeah, perfect. This should be fine. So we will go blue, red, green, and then attack with our first Eskinor card. Um, man, I actually ended up setting really well. I had the Yormungander to kind of finish off the final phase. So pretty much anything beyond that. It gives a 45% damage increase after ultimate at 6-6, six, six, if I'm not mistaken. So you can put out big, big damage. Um, Eskinor single target card here going to do a chunky amount. Beyond this point, um, I honestly think just this Kusart card alone will be enough to do some really good damage. Um, put the deer to a point where we can kind of finish off with a one more Eskinor card, but as you can see, we've got the Corrosion. Not super big worry since we're not going to be really, not going to be in this event for any longer. Uh, let's go you here and then that, and then I'm pretty confident that should be enough. I'll probably just go ahead and throw out these cards just in case. I mean, if we do end up missing that, we'll probably end up failing the event. <laughs> Yeah, I think a red card beyond this point would have killed Eskinor big damage. So I did actually end up getting a little bit distracted and reset the run instead of Ulth f Um, Yeah, good job me. That was totally what I was supposed to do. Uh, I'm guessing this should be enough to kill. It being the Kusar card, a little bit stronger than some of Jormungandr's ones. Uh, Cleave effect as well, just... Cleave effect just goes, but yeah, that is that's definitely going to put us at the limit there. Either Kusak or Freya doing the damage, it's going to be enough. And then this is the part where Eskinor having Scorch is just godsend. So perfect for this kind of content. But there we go. Once again, Eskinor victory screen. Exactly what we want to see. Guaranteed reward. And I would have liked a couple more of the Valkyrie pieces there. But there we go. The absolute best team, in my opinion, for clearing the deer as fast as possible. Granted, there were a little hiccups there, but they were all Buzerara. The team absolutely goes. Uh, would recommend probably leveling up the Yormungandran. Depending on when on your team gets attacked the most, you can, of course, swap this Tamiyoro Relic. I don't know why they actually went for Kusark instead. I swear last time I did this, they were... I swear last time they were attacking him. However, I did get the Holy Relic since then, so maybe that's why they've decided to kind of switch up on gang like that. But once again... That just about does it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If so, please hit like button and subscribe. It really means a lot to me and I'll see you guys for some more Grand Crafts content.